In this lesson, we're going to look at two basic vector operations. We're going to look at scalar multiplication and vector addition. In operations with vectors, numbers are usually referred to as scalars. So when we say scalar multiplication, we're just multiplying by a number. Geometrically, the product of a vector v and a number, or a scalar k, is a new vector that is the absolute value of k times as long as the original vector. So we're going to look at that first in this space provided down here. We're going to look at scalar multiplication geometrically. All right, let's say we have a vector in component form. and that we have a number that we're going to call k is equal to 2. All right, geometrically, what does that look like? Well, let me go ahead and sketch vector v. I know it starts at the origin because of this, these symbols. It's not parentheses, so I'm going to start my vector here. I'm going to go over 1 and up 3. Put my terminal point, connect, and put an arrow here. If we're told to take and multiply our vector by a value of 2, a number 2, that scalar 2, so basically what we're doing is we're multiplying both of these numbers in component form by 2, so we're going to get 2, 6. So let's sketch 2, 6, 4, 5, 6, which means if I sketch a new vector whose components are 2, 6, I start at the origin again, I go up to 2, 6, I go back to the origin and I connect and we can see that this new vector appears to be twice as long as the original vector. So geometrically, that's what we're doing. We're just extending a vector when we multiply it by a scalar or a number. All right, so scalar multiplication is one of the two basic vector operations. And the other one is vector addition. So down here, it says to add two vectors u and v geometrically, First position, I need to change that, them, without changing their lengths or directions so that the initial point of the second vector, V, actually starts or coincides with the ending point of the ve uh, first vector, U. This is called the parallelogram law because a par parallelogram is formed. All right, let's look at vector addition geometrically. All right, let's say we have a vector u whose components are 2, 1. And we have a second vector that also starts at the origin whose components are negative 2, 2. Let's draw a coordinate plane here. Let's go ahead and plot each of these vectors. So vector u is going to be over here, 2, 1. Starts at the origin. Got an arrow here, and this is vector u. Vector v is plotted as negative 2, positive 2. Connect back from the origin with an arrow. This is vector v. Okay, they're saying that when we add these two geometrically, what it looks like is that we're supposed to take the second vector's initial point, which is right here, and place it at the tip or the terminal point of the first vector. So go to the second vector, and what you're doing is you're just moving this vector so that its initial point, which is right here, starts at the terminal point of U. So when I think about how long this is, I would at the tip of this point right here, okay, place that vector V at the terminal point. So it appears that when I add these two together, if I go back to the origin and I think about what point this is, this is the point 0, 3. So which is also saying that if I have a vector represented from the origin up to that point, that the sum of these two should give us a new vector called, in component form, 0, 3. So if we look back at adding u and v, it's almost intuitive that we should add the x's and add the y's. When you add the x's, you get 0. When you add the y's, you get 3. So it makes sense that if I was going to add these two together, that my uh, sum 
would be um, the vector in component form of um, 0, 3. That's geometrically. Mostly our work is going to be focused on just adding these two together by adding the x's, adding the y's, getting 0, 3, and moving on. All right, let's do a little bit more work with uh, scalar multiplication and vector addition down here. All right, it's just telling us if we have a vector u and v and we have a scalar k, then the sum of u and v is, and we got a little formula here, but I think it's more intuitive. Let's do an example. All right, so using the example above, let's just say again that we have vector u whose components are 2, 1, and we have vector v whose components are negative 2, 2. So what this formula is saying is add the x's and add the y's. So the sum u plus v is as easy as adding x's, getting 0, adding y's, getting 3, using the same notation. And we can verify that up here, the sum was going to be the ending point here when we attach vector v to ve vector u. The ending point was going to be 0, 3. So vector addition is easy. I think given two vectors in component form, just add the x's, add the y's. All right, and the same thing down here in this next piece, scalar multiplication. So the way you might see it is you'll see a number times a vector in component form, uh, and then we take the k and multiply it by each of the components here to where we get the result of these new components. So using our example above, I'll just call it u instead of v, but consider vector u to be 1, 3. If you're asked to find two u, we're just multiplying 2 by each of these components, and we're getting 2, 6, and that's it. All right, let's look at a couple other things that may come up. The negative of vector v is just taking negative 1 and multiplying it by each component, so we can see that we're just going to make the opposite of each of the original components. So here's an example. Let's say we have vector v whose components are 4, negative 5. So the negative would just be multiplying a negative 1 through here, which means now we have negative 4, positive 5. Okay, and just real quickly, I'm going to show a diagram of this and what took place. Let's say the original vector v so components are positive 4, maybe negative 5 down here. So start at the origin, connect, arrow. That's vector v. Well, the opposite of vector v would have components negative 4, positive 5, starts at the origin, and goes in this direction. So same length, opposite direction. And the last thing we're going to look at is what, what happens when you subtract two vectors. Well, the best thing to do is probably change that subtraction to an addition and take the opposite of the second vector. All right, and so of course we have formulas here, but I'm gonna stay away from those. Let me look at an example. Vector U's components are three, four. Vector V's components are negative two, five. And we're asked to add, or excuse me, subtract u minus v. Well, instead of doing u minus v, it might be better to do u plus opposite v. All right, so instead of subtracting, let's take u and add the opposite of V. So opposite of V just means to change the signs. So now we can just go back to addition, which is so much easier. So now let's add. So 3 plus 2 is 5. 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1. So that might be the easier approach instead of just subtracting. If you want to subtract, that's fine. You just do 3 minus negative 2. That gives 5. You do 4 minus 5. That gives negative 1. 
So your choice if you prefer addition or subtraction doesn't bother you. Either way, if we do everything correctly, we should get the right vector answer. Right, that's it for our operations, basic vector operations.